Next, we will talk about the one-dimensional random walk process. And to define this process, first we define the random step process, E of n, is defined as the two times I of n minus one. And if you remember, I of n here is the IID Bernoulli sequence. So I of n is either zero or one. That means you multiply it by two, you get either zero or two. Subtract one, that means you get either minus one or plus one. So essentially, the probability that D of n is plus one is equal to one, uh, sorry, is equal to P, and the probability that um, the step is minus one is one minus P. So essentially the random step process is with probability P, you, you take a step of plus one, and with probability one minus P, you take a step of minus one. And we define the one dimensional random walk process as the sum uh, of uh, steps D of I from one to N, okay? So it's like you start from zero. Um, let's say this is zero. Okay. Let's say uh, you take uh, one step plus one at time one, you get plus one. Okay. At, at time two, you get, let's say, another plus one. At time three, you get minus one. At time four, you get plus one. At time five, you get plus one and then let's say minus one, and then minus one, and then minus one, and then plus one, and then minus one, and then minus one, plus one, etc. Okay, so this is the one dimensional random walk, uh, discrete time, discrete value uh, based on this definition. And we can also write its uh, PMF at a time instant n, time index n, uh, the probability that the random walk process equals K is, <clears throat> of course, um, it, it depends on the K value in the sense that uh, there are some uh, values of K that you cannot reach at time index N. For instance, let's say, um, if you start from zero at one, uh, you are either at plus one or minus one, right? And then one step further at time two, uh, if you were at plus one, you can go to plus two, or you can go to zero, or if, if you were at minus one, you can go to minus two, or you can go to zero. For instance, at time two, as you see, it's impossible that random walk takes the value of plus one or minus one. That is simply because uh, this is not satisfied. K here is one, let's say, N is two, and one plus two divided by two is not an integer, okay? Um, so that means uh, to reach K at a time index N, you, you must have taken um, K plus N over two plus one steps and minus K plus N over two minus one steps, okay? And that is impossible if K plus N over two is not an integer. And if, if, if it is integer, on the other hand, the probability is given here, obviously, and choose k plus n over two times p to the power k plus n over two. These are plus one steps. And one minus p to the power minus, can, minus k plus n over two. And this is the minus one steps. And obviously, if you add them up, you will get um, k. k plus n over two. These are the plus one steps. And I subtract the number of minus one steps, minus k plus n over two, you will get k, okay? And based on uh, this PMF, uh, you can compute the expected value, but there is an easier way based on the definition, this definition here, and along with this one. Well, as I said, you, you have the PMF, so using this PMF, you can compute the mean, but it's a little bit unnecessary because, well, the random walk process is defined in this way, sum from one to n of two times i, I of i minus one steps. And of course you can take out the, uh, the sum from out of expectation. And the expected value of this Bernoulli trial is P. So one of these is two P minus one, and I have N of them. That means the expected value is N times two P minus one. Obviously, you see that this is dependent on time. 
And that makes sense because, well, this random walk progresses with respect to time. You take at each index plus one or minus one steps. For instance, the range of the values you might be at uh, is proportional to n. If, if you look at, if you observe this random walk in, let's say, n equals 10, the range of values it can take is between minus 10 and plus 10, right? 10 minus one steps or 10 plus one steps or anything in between. You cannot be at 12, for instance, it's impossible. But if you change the origin, time origin, if you shift it, then that means this range will change. If you shift it towards right, then you can never reach plus 10 or minus 10. Or if you shift it towards left, then you would be able to reach, let's say, 12 or minus 12, okay? The distribution, therefore, depends on time. Therefore, random walk is not stationary. But as you see, the mean also depends on time. Also, that means it's not even stationary in the mean or stationary or first sense stationary, first order stationary. It's not even, even that, okay? But random walk has independent and stationary increments based on the fact that uh, it's a sum process on an IID sequence, okay? Therefore, this makes it easy uh, to compute its autocorrelation function. Again, without loss of generality, we will assume n2 is greater than or equal to n1, and we will write the autocorrelation of random walk at n1, n2, and by definition, it's equal to this expectation. And this wn2, again, I'm going to write as wn1 plus the remainder steps, okay? The steps from n1 plus 1 up to n2, okay? And when you expand this, you will have, of course, again, WN1 square plus WN1 times this summation. And uh, this here is WN1 square is, well, uh, it's the square of these terms, right? WN1 plus uh, WN1 square. If you remember the definition, WN1, you expand it, it's just uh, d1 plus d2 up to d of n1. So if you take the square of this, you'll get d1 times d1, d1 times d2, d1 times d3, etc., up to d1 times dn1, and then you move on to the second one, d2 times d1, d2 times d2, d2 times d3, etc., up to d2 times dn1, etc. It goes on like that. So you can write this square as this sum. A double sum, uh, the product of di and dj, similar to what I have done. And this one here, again, uh, independent of this sum, because in time they do not overlap, right? So I can separate their uh, expectations, expected value of wn1 times expected value of this sum, and the sum can come out of the expectation, and inside I just have 2p minus 1, and expected value of this uh, depends on, uh, again, n1 times 2p minus 1. And this term here, well, what do I have? I have d1 square, d2 square, d3 square, etc., up to dn1 square. And I also have the cross terms, right? So these are the square terms. And here I have the cross terms where i and j are different, right? And this is important because, well, D is here is the step process, right? And the random step process. And DI and DJ, when I and J are different, are independent. That's the good thing about this term here. And this, is, we have the second moments. The second moment of uh, the step process is at, uh, at any point in time is, well, the variance plus square of its mean. And its variance is... Uh, well, uh, you see, uh, if you write this, uh, well, it's easier than this because, well, the square of the random step is always one. If you remember the distribution, it's plus one with probability P, it's minus one with probability one minus P. So in either case, the square is plus one, okay? And I have N1 of these terms. That means this term 
entirely reduces to N1. Okay, and this term here, as I said, I can separate the expected expectations of each of these, which are 2P minus one. Um, so I have in total here, how many terms? N1 times N1 minus one. So essentially that is N1 squared minus N1 because N1 of those terms are here. Okay, and again here I have expected value of WN1 that is N1 times 2P minus one and multiplied by this sum here. And that is, I have n and two minus n one terms here. Each of them is two p minus one, so you get this. If you arrange it, the result is n one plus n one times n two minus one times two p minus one squared. Okay. And obviously, since I have n one here by itself, it directly shows me that this cannot be white sense stationary because I need the absolute value of N1. And two minus N1 by itself doesn't help. So it's not white sense stationary, uh, but you see its expected value is N times two P minus one from previous slide, if you remember. And this in general depends on N except for when P equals exactly one half in which case the expected value is zero, independent of time, and therefore the random walk process is stationary in the mean only for p equals one half, okay? If the p value is not exactly one half, it's not even stationary in the mean. 